Hello and welcome to Sandra Rope TV. I'm Kurt. Uh, I wanted to do another report on ammo shortages because it's getting a lot worse out there. Um, people are having a really hard time finding ammo. It was bad a month ago. It's really bad now. I've never seen it like this. I've been shooting since I was 21. I've never seen anything like this. And so I wanted to do a little research into finding out maybe there's a, a real reason more maybe beyond just supply and demand and uh, stockpiling. Uh, there's a couple things to keep in mind. I, it, a lot of people think, well, maybe it's the military is buying it all. The military is buying a lot, but they pretty much get it from primarily uh, one source. Um, but I'm, I'm going to get into that. Uh, law enforcement's buying a lot. Law enforcement, I think, is a bigger component in the issue because the law enforcement has been highly militarized in the sense that they carry more AR-15s. They're carrying more um, um, just a, a, a lot of things that require a lot of training. If you carry an AR-15, the police departments are requiring thousands of rounds of, of ammo to be shot through it in training, and uh, the officers don't have to pay for that, so, so you, the taxpayer, does. But this slowdown in the economy has also meant lower uh, budgets for those departments, which, is, which should equate to um, kind of a balancing uh, effect, which should uh, cause that to change, but that hasn't changed. So uh, what's going on? Well, there's a company called uh, Alliant Technology, uh, ATK for short. Uh, I went and I'll post the link to their uh, stock press release report, whatnot. Um, they actually produced uh, 1.4 billion rounds of ammunition um, fiscal year 2008. Now, they're the leading supplier. In fact, I want to say they're the only supplier but they're the leading supplier for the United States military. They operate the Lake City um, operations uh, plant in um, Independence, Missouri. They also operate uh, an ammo plant in Radford, Virginia. Uh, if you have, um, here we go, if you have uh, the Walmart brand, uh, Blazer, I think this is the Walmart brand, brand um, also known as um, Spear, or CCI, that is something they also produce. They produce the Federal Premium Fusion um, Estate, and uh, yeah, with uh, and, and those that I just mentioned. Now, um, they also are, if you have any of these brands, uh, reloading and uh, other types of uh, shooting-related accessories. RCBS, um, Outers Champion, Shooters Ridge, Weaver. Um, Redfield, Simmons, and Nitrex. Um, some of those I don't know what they are, some of those I do. I know the reloading components. Um, and then uh, their competition would be uh, Winchester, Remington, um, Hornady, Black Hills, Wolf, uh, Rio, Fio, 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 Chi, I can't pronounce it, um, and Selliers. Now, um, but really, realistically, they are the leading supplier of ammunition. So this is the question. Um, it says that here that 12% um, of their uh, income is military contract, but it doesn't say what percentage of the ammunition um, really is uh, commercial versus military sold. So for example, they say it's 12%. Well, what if 90% of the ammo they make goes straight to the military? We have no way of knowing what the actual percentage is. But um, I looked further in it, and as um, you know, some uh, some people I subscribe to, I think some of them subscribe to my videos. Don Harold, uh, Vision Victory. You guys are better on the numbers and the stock and all that kind of stuff. You might want to take a look at this, and maybe see if I was wrong anywhere on this report. But basically, um, they've seen a 15% increase in ammo sales. That's volume uh, for 2008 uh, versus 2007. Um, and then I started looking into their actual numbers and more than, greater than 50% of those sales was actually civilian sales. So this, uh, this kind of stuff. So um, that's a, you know, that's a significant increase in uh, civilian buying. So no doubt there is some stockpiling going on. And that's frustrating for me because I want to go to the range and I want to shoot my guns and I can't do that. Well, I can, but I don't want to deplete the ammo that I do have knowing that I cannot replace it. And here's the, here's the interesting thing. Uh, wolf, you, know, I've got, you can't find wolf. Um, you can probably find a few boxes of Remington here and there, um, but it's so expensive. Um, 
This is actually really nice ammo, Magtech. Um, I like it. it, it's really good. Can't find it either. Uh, every single type of ammunition. Um, here, take a look at this. Um, you can see that's the Sportsman's Guide website. Just go look and see if they have any 40 in stock. They have some really oddball, you know, type uh, boxes, but almost nothing. Uh, all of it is back ordered significantly, and um, and that is uh, that's not a good thing when you when you want to go out and be proficient with your weapon, and yet you can't you can't go out. So. I've looked into reloading, and you're having the same problem there. All you reloaders out there, I know you're running into the same problem because you can't get primers. Primer box, a thousand primers used to be thirty dollars. Now it's eighty dollars. Um, so what's what's going on? Well, there's a couple different things. There's a supply and demand issue. People are stockpiling in fears of uh, economy, pandemic, uh, Obama, taxes on ammunition. And you know, you name it. There's also another component. If the government wanted to create a, um, a, uh, a bottleneck, which would create a, a significant shortage, not just a shortage. All they would have to do was direct this ATK company and say, look, we have priority, we have a contract with you, we demand that you produce 90% um, you know, of your operations, you be producing ammo for us. Because here's the deal, um, in, we've been borrowing uh, ammunition for years with the war in Iraq and Afghanistan from anybody, anybody, Israel, and uh, they have to buy, we have to buy a lot of ammo and ship it over there to replace it. We're also sending it to who knows where. Uh, I was wondering, well, where's this, where would they, how would they do this? How would they buy ammunition? Well, um, they wouldn't have to buy it to stockpile it. They could just say it's a requirement for the war. It's a requirement for this or that. And it wouldn't take a lot to create a bottleneck. Now, you create a bottleneck with the largest supplier in the United States, the largest manufacturer of ammunition. Um, what happens? All these other companies start getting hit. And these companies are smaller. Um, now, Wolf's pretty large, but they're overseas, they're Russian, they supply to a lot of different parts. Um, and really, they make crappy ammunition. It smells, it's steel-cased, you can't reload it. Um, so, but it, nevertheless, it's, it's effective for just training. If I want to shoot, it's, it's a good ammunition. But it's overseas, um, there's a backlog because it has to come across the ocean. There's, there's a significant lag. Um, AmmoMan.com is out. It's been out for months, hasn't seen, hasn't seen a single round of 40 and I, I'm, that, that has come in. So in any case, um, but these other companies are smaller. They don't have the, the massive facility to produce 1.4 billion rounds of ammunition. So you, uh, you create a bottleneck um, at the major source, what happens? You, you create a bottleneck with all of them because then the demand just shoots up through all these other companies. You, you, you heighten the hype behind uh, a shortage, which uh, creates, uh, you know, supply issues, which creates prices going up. Um, everybody starts running out to buy every little bit of ammunition they can get. I'm all for having a significant amount, amount of ammunition, not stockpiling just for the sake of stockpiling. But we're at the point now where it is so bad to get ammunition that I am, I'll buy every box that I can get my hand on. Anybody that's reloading locally, I will buy whatever they've got. And, I don't care if it if I end up with five thousand rounds, I'll I'll shoot it off in in, in no time. So, but and, and I know a lot of people are the, on the on the same page as me on that. But here's the thing. <laughs> this is what's frustrating me the most is that in in doing this, we are effectively doing what the anti-gun people couldn't have dreamed of with their wildest legislation, because. Without bullets, this is a worthless paperweight. And um, <laughs> they're, they, they're, this is their ultimate goal. I mean, if you restrict ammunition, you, you make a gun a worthless thing. Um, I still, uh, there's 1.4 billion rounds, even if just 10% of that uh, is out there. That's a lot of ammunition. So, 
um, I don't know what they're thinking that they're they're solving anything by this. They're just making us angry. But that's a little thing, little uh, numbers. I hope that helps. Hope that um, gives you some insight. Um, and uh, if you can, find some ammo.